let's talk security. In preparation of this webinar, I've turned to Google to learn more about the state of cybersecurity in the past few years, and more specifically, the vast amount of investments being made in this field and the results they yield. I've copied in my sources below so you can come to the same conclusion. It's no surprise that we've all been spending more and more in cybersecurity over the last couple of years. Predictions claim that most of the security budgets will increase yet again in 2021. We see a small bump in 2020, where companies held off major investments or shifted their priorities because of COVID. Taking a closer look into which fields of security these investments are being planned, we see that network security is one of the top priorities. When we look at the offensive side of cybersecurity, we can easily conclude that despite all of these investments, nothing has really changed. We haven't moved the needle in our favor and we haven't stopped the sheer number of attacks. Based on these charts, we can conclude that it still takes us the same amount of time to identify and contain a data breach. The average cost related to data breaches is still trending upwards. Front and center are the ransomware damages that are nearly doubling year over year. Based on these numbers, perhaps our approach to network security isn't really working. Traditionally, we've been attacking this problem by adding more and more security services to our data centers. Typically, in the form of physical appliances, we've been adding firewalls, IDS IPS solutions, load balancers, etc. to try and secure our private cloud workloads. This approach works great for all north-south type of communications, network flows leaving and entering the data center. But what we're really looking for is a data center security solution, which is also concerned about the internal applications and not only the outside in communications. The challenge is that most of the communication flows in your data center are actually not north-south. They usually happen between workloads. These workloads typically are virtualized and live in a virtualized environment. In order to consume those security services running on physical hardware, information needs to leave the virtual environment, go over the security appliance for inspection, and then return into the virtual environment. This is because these security solutions are network devices. And because they have a specific place in the network, typically acting as a gateway, communication flows needs to go over them in order for them to do their job. As far as they're concerned, the workloads they are trying to protect are just another source or destination on the network. They lack any kind of context as to what they're actually protecting. That's why we took another approach and virtualized these security services. They now become part of the hypervisor, part of the same infrastructure you already leverage to host your applications. This simple change in architecture allows us to enforce the security policies very close to where the applications run, again, inside the hypervisor as opposed to somewhere else in the network. This also allows us to bring a lot of context to how we build security policies. Your hypervisor knows best what kind of application it is hosting, so we can leverage that information to build our security strategy. We can extend that approach towards other network and security services like web application firewalls and analytics. This allows us to have proper insight on how your applications communicate amongst each other, which in turn brings a vast amount of intelligence into our solution, helping even further in understanding how your applications interact with each other resulting in an almost zero-effort approach to building a micro-segmented environment. In short, we're bringing the necessary next-generation security controls to where they have the most impact, inside your infrastructure, as part of the hypervisor, and extremely close to your applications. By doing this, we can start thinking about micro-segmentation. Micro-segmentation is the ability to enforce security controls per individual workload. Independent of the type of workload, whether that's a traditional virtual machine or a container or even a bare metal server, the NSX Distribute Firewall allows us to properly protect them from one another. This brings an unseen level of security to your applications where there was little or no control before. Things like lateral movement of malware or unauthorized access by people or processes that have no business on certain workloads is a thing of the past. Microsegmentation is a very strong proposition and the foundation of VMware's security offering. That's why we're doing it properly. In its simplest form, NSX Distribute Firewall provides a stateful layer 4 firewall for all individual workloads. Over the years, we've enriched those firewall capabilities with things as layer 7 application ID. 
This allows for a more granular approach to policy and rule creation, because we are not bothered with ports anymore, but with actual protocols and applications. We've also made the firewall smarter by incorporating users and roles from Active Directory or LDAP, allowing us to build policies with objects that matter. For instance, allowing engineers access to engineering workloads through certain applications is a valid rule in NSX Distribute Firewall. Policies are applied and enforced independently of any underlying networks. This allows us to create logical segmentation between different tenants, applications, or in this example, availability domains like test, dev, and production. With great power, however, comes great responsibility. How do you even begin creating rules and strategies in an environment where before everyone was free to talk to each other? NSX takes care of that as well. Since the NSX is part of the hypervisor, it's very well positioned to inspect each communication flow between all your workloads. It takes that information and presents it back to you, so we can start making informed decisions on how to roll out a micro-segmentation strategy. Let's see if we can build a policy for our web servers. By zooming in, we can immediately see all the flows related to our web server workloads. The flows in green were recognized and processed by the NSX Distribute Firewall while the ones in red simply don't have a rule tied to them yet. Let's change that. Based on all the collected information, like network flows, but also the processes responsible for generating those flows, NSX can make a recommendation on what a micro-segmentation policy might look like in the context of our web servers. We can easily simulate that before we apply this recommendation by looking at the impact of these rules before they are even active, here visualized by the red and green groups. The biggest takeaway here is that NSX has all the tools on board to allow you to start building policies on day one based on relevant information gathered from how your application interacts with each other. This lowers the threshold and any potential administrative overhead to get started with micro-segmentation tremendously. As smart as a firewall is, it generally only allows or stops traffic from happening. We needed a more granular approach to how our workloads are accessing certain resources like URLs, for instance. That's why we've added full qualified domain name whitelisting to its capabilities. We could have added a simple URL filter, but we've chosen to do it through classification and reputation instead. Next to our ability to add custom URLs, we leveraged the classification engine to make sure we only access relevant sites. And thanks to the reputation engine, we are sure those sites have not been infected or breached overnight, adding yet another layer of protection to an already robust firewall. Denying access to infected sites is one way of stopping potential threats, but why stop there when there are numerous other ways to get breached? How can a firewall protect you against an unpatched server? or zero-day attacks aimed at your organization or against other vulnerabilities inside your network by making it even smarter. We've added intrusion detection and prevention capabilities to the NSX Distribute Firewall. Now, we're not only firewalling traffic specific to our applications, but we're also inspecting that traffic for any known exploits. The beauty of this approach is that we achieve almost unlimited scale with massive throughput. Because the inspection engine is tied to your infrastructure, upgrading that infrastructure effectively also upgrades the scale of your built-in IPS solution. This eliminates any blind spots inside your network, because the IPS engine is running at exactly the same place as the distributed firewall, which was already able to see all traffic. Another benefit is that the inspection is also closely tied to your workloads, enabling a high degree of mobility without breaking security. And these are just the benefits of virtualizing intrusion detection and prevention. The real power, however, comes from context. Our hypervisor knows best what applications it is hosting. By using that information, we can determine that certain workloads require specific inspection. Instead of going over thousands of signatures each time, we have the power to only look for vulnerabilities relevant to our workloads. If we can do that for one workload, we can do it for all workloads. Radically reducing the number of signatures required for inspection. The end result 
is a very fast and competent intrusion prevention system tailored to our specific environment. Its competency is also reflected on how we report back intrusion attempts. As part of the NSX firewall solution, we've built an interface that allows for easy management. Typically, intrusion prevention systems can generate many, many alerts. We took the liberty to group, color code, and arrange them by severity as well as over time. With just one glance at this dashboard, you can immediately see which intrusion attempts require your attention. Simply hovering over one already gives you a good idea of the scope and severity of its attempt. And by clicking on it, we reveal all the details. Who tried to attack who, from where, when and how. We show you how many workloads are affected by this attempt and perhaps require further attention, like a security patch for instance. We also show the relevant CVE and CVS information to allow for further investigation into these types of intrusion attempts. The intrusion detection and prevention solution is only one part of our advanced threat protection capabilities. Recently, we've introduced network sandboxing as an additional layer of protection. Sandboxing technology allows for the inspection of potentially malicious files in a controlled area. We're effectively detonating a file to see how it behaves over time. What kind of processes is it spawning? Is it making network connections to the outside world? Is it trying to encrypt something? In short, is it behaving like it claims it should, or is it acting strange? The result of this exercise is deep program knowledge, which increases our ability to detect zero-day malware. At the same time, we are also inspecting all your network flows through network threat analysis. Based on artificial intelligence, this will determine if communication flows are anomalies to regular traffic. Through machine learning, it adapts to how your applications are working and filters out any potentially malicious network behaviors. By themselves, these three different approaches to network security are already very powerful, but the true power lies in combining them. For instance, if something seems off in your network, the network threat analysis should pick that up and share that with the sandbox engine. The result of that inspection could be a new signature for the intrusion detection engine. We've dubbed this collaboration our Network Detection and Remediation Solution. Combining these security mechanisms allows for much deeper insights and controls. It's not only about stopping threats from entering your environment, it's also about making sure the rest of your network is properly protected against these types of threats. By collecting and analyzing data from your network, we're now able to create a forensic report on how new threats can manifest themselves and our ability into stopping them. These analysis reports are not only important to learn how new or existing malware works, but by properly understanding the scope of an attack, we can start taking actions to avoid further spread. Automating this process results in a self-learning platform with the potential to stop even the most brutal attacks. Another reason we go above and beyond traditional firewalling is because we are following a framework set out by the MITRE organization. The MITRE attack framework is a model that covers all different layers of an attack, ranging from initial access over lateral movement all the way up to the impact of an attack. With the NSX firewall advanced threat protection, we cover all aspects of modern attacks. Now, how can you benefit from all this and how can you get started right away? VMware has recently released a couple of security oriented licenses to help get our customers to this increased level of security as fast as possible. These new subscription licenses allow customers to get started with security immediately without the need to change the network, change any topology or deploy an overlay software defined network. The only requirement is a supported vSphere environment. We divided it up into two distinct approaches. With the NSX firewall license, we aim to get our customers onto a micro-segmented environment with very little effort in as little time as possible. This license covers all your needs to get started with the NSX distribute firewall. We've added NSX intelligence to it so you can gather relevant network flows from your environment and build a security strategy on day one. 
with the NSX Firewall Advanced Threat Prevention License, we enrich that foundation with additional security controls like distributed intrusion detection and protection, malware detection and sandboxing technology, covering our entire network detection and remediation offering. If you want to learn more about NSX security after this brief overview, we invite you to our NSX Advanced Threat Prevention landing page on VMware.com. Is watching demos and presentations more your thing? Then we have those available as well on YouTube. We also prepared a couple of lab environments for you to get acquainted with the NSX Firewall solution on VMware's very own hands-on lab page.